What you're about to see is pre-alpha footage of Owen's Destruction. This was recorded months in advance, so there's still some placeholders in game. We're really hard at work right now and can't wait for you to get your hands on it at release. Hunter, deliberate, relentless. The eyes of corn blaze down upon us. Absolutely proficient in killing. Seek out your prey, bring it down, bask in the favor of corn. So let's get reaping those skulls, humiliating those lords, and showing off that fancy club. Cranium collector himself and champion of corn. His presence in the known world will chill the chainmail of any champion, as he seeks out worthy champions to display their skulls on his trophy case of a cloak. Those unlucky enough to start their journey in Lustria will come face to face with him. Before we begin, if you're seeking a full list of updates coming with Omens of Destruction, check out our blog through the links below. We began our campaign at Hualotl in the Guanji Valley, a beautiful sunny climate for slaughter. Skulltaker is first and foremost a fighter, with strong melee attack and the blooded wanderer trait, increasing his campaign movement range and line of sight, allowing him to focus his efforts on his target. Execution. Basically don't get in his way. Surrounded by disciples of Zinch, we quickly moved over to Quirtax for the first step of our skull harvest. It was a modest result, which we raised for an additional Bloodhost army, expending our skulls in return for more momentum on the map. Our second attack was on Chakwe, and by this point, the lands had begun to bleed through with our corruption. The distant rules of the Lizardmen just north of us have quelled, the result of Bretonian maniacs crusading through the jungles. But they've stepped too far into these lands, and they don't know what awaits them. And so, Turn 8. We've made our first attack on Albrecht's faction, raising Zahatek and spawning yet another blood host army. Skulltaker is a corn faction, so he abides by similar rules. You will be expanding towards your enemies, you will take over their settlements, you will sacrifice and raise them in the name of corn. However, we've introduced an interesting twist on this premise related to Skulltaker's Cloak of Skulls. More on that in just a moment. We're playing a bit of a balancing game with our resources. Skulls provide us with Bloodhost armies, but we've got other uses for Skulls now. Let's send one of our followers up to the settlement of Bragon to recover our lost Skulls. It'll also provide a nice blow to Alberic, as raising a settlement now leaves it uninhabitable for other factions for a few turns. Be gone, Bragon. That was, that was terrible, sorry. Oh, hello. It's fine, I need the Skulls. Outbreak is our first encounter with a legendary lord. His reputation on the field means he is worth more to us than a generic lord. Defeating him will earn Skulltaker 60 points of champion essence, which we can spend on buffs through our Cloak of Skulls mechanic. His army is big though, so for now we'll leave him to his ruins and target Laxlan. There is another tasty Bretonian skull there I can harvest worth 16 champion essence. Bit of an easier target for us at this stage of our campaign. According to lore, the Skulltaker is a duelist. What he usually does is when, for example, corn forces are besieging a fortress, he stands before the gates of the fortress on his own and he issues a challenge. Sooner or later, someone marches out to face him and um, they lose, always, invariably. You will see that each of them carries a different amount of champion essence, which depends on their level of experience and on the victories that they fought. This is a resource that you will gain once you face them in battle and you defeat them. And you will use this champion essence to enhance the skulls on the cloak. Each of the skulls is giving you different bonuses. You can unlock bonuses, you can further upgrade them. So this is actually a chief part of your gameplay loop. Be on the lookout for meaty enemy lords with a lot of champion essence, attack them, gain their champion essence, become stronger and seek other prey for you to hunt down. 
Our Cloak of Skulls holds many abilities in its noggins. For example, the Cloak of Skulls ability increases our armor and missile resistance, as well as making us immune to flanking. My original Bloodhost armies are clinging on by their claws, but they make up for the lack of recruitment I've made. Let's burn them up in one final battle and replace them as we move up north. Oh, oh. hello Empire. What's this? Another tasty skull worth 16 essence points. Well, that'll take us past our threshold for the next skull on the cloak. I don't think I could turn that down. Let's give chase. My favorite unit of the Skull Taker is the Blood Beasts of Corn. Huge, brutish, ape like monsters that are exceptionally good on the charge. They've got armor piercing damage, they induce fear in their enemies, and they have a particularly cool animation. They're particularly fun to use against goblins. Goblins, you say? I hear rumors of goblin armies up in the old world. Perhaps a good spot for some champion hunting. Perhaps even a Carlfartic trip. I'm sure he'd like to meet the official 100th legendary lord. That, that is decided, right? Skull taker? 100th? No one's gonna question me. Oh, Marcus is making his way downtown. Let's move out the way and get some recruitment going for a welcome party. The Corn Gores, in comparison to the Pestigors and Zangors, bring forward a more aggressive, hard-hitting role. They feature all the best benefits and qualities of the Mark of Corn, and when they've taken enough damage, their ability will trigger, which will further enhance their melee prowess. Alberic's forces are skulking around our lands. He'll likely be growing strength, but with a higher population of skulls north of us, I think we'll head in that direction. I have something in mind for when Alberic is worthy of my attention, but let's also arrange some backup. The Bloodspeaker is a new lord that plays a supportive role for Korn. He specialises in buffing units around him, and when mounted, he adds that mobility. In order to boost our numbers further, we're going to utilise the Skull Throne, a new mechanic for Korn that lets us spend our Harvested Skulls on more campaign buffs. Tears unlock with the more Skulls you spend, so once Marcus is defeated, I'll probably reduce my spend on Blood Hosts and begin building my way up the throne. For now, I'll select Blood X Nihil, which spawns us two extra units for our new blood hosts. Blood may be for the blood god, but today, the skulls are for our cloak. It's turn 57, and we're deep in the jungles of Powalaxa. Lizard men's skulls are nice and all, but they look a bit out of place on my cloak. Regardless, the champion essence I've extracted along their Sutter-like roads has fully unlocked my target tier, giving us the ability to teleport Skulltaker to lords he deems worthy to fight. Mm, bad news for Alberic, who in my absence has been raiding my settlement and attempting to recover his dignity. He's doing fairly well. Oh, he's taking back Laxland. And yep, he's taking out Itza. Hmm, 96 points of essence, I think, I think it's time. Before our attack, we'll utilize the Skull Throne one more time. We've amassed a hefty pile of skulls and can replenish our army to its full health. favorite unit, it's definitely got to be the Slaughter Brute. 
It's this large, hulking creature that has very little that can stop it in combat. Very proficient in taking down its enemies. Skylar Amphengrim can be summarised as kill for corn. It's all we can say. It's going to be the last thing you hear, and he's very good at it. Scar Bloodruff is our frontline hero who's themed around both self revival and healing. He's going to be very difficult to take down. The Wrathmongers is a unit that I feel the players will get behind, and that's primarily because of their weapons, the Wrath Flails. That enables them to deal devastating splash attacks and, in general, just hard armor piercing attacks. The Skull Reapers are similar to the Chaos Warriors of Korn. While they have less armor, they are in no way less effective in combat. They are absolutely devastating against infantry whilst being cost effective. I've been trying to get Outbreak all battle, but he gets flying around. This should trap him in position for us. Alberic may have recovered from our initial meeting, but upon his triumphant return, he has only proved himself a more worthy opponent to the Skull Taker. With his glory finally in view, the Cloak of Skulls, Will Skulltaker live up to his name? Let us know in the comments below, or follow our links to wishlist now.